What is going on, Thumb Thumbs? This is Sun Brother 2, bringing you guys our week 9? Week 9? Wait, hold on. Ah! I'm already messing up, but I'm not even 10 seconds into the video. Uh, yeah, week 9 team builder for the Salt Lake City Swamperts, who are currently sitting at 6 and 2. That's right, you guys, we are currently sitting at 6 and 2. Our record is phenomenal this season. Uh, and this week we are versing Carlos, coach of the Iowa Cub Chews, who is a new coach that's popped in this season. So thank you so much for uh, being a new coach, uh, Carlos, and stepping in. But Carlos has a very, very scary team. Uh, however, as far as his record stands, Carlos is at... Uh, he is currently at 5-3. and three, So he's doing really, really well. Uh, he's just one victory behind us. So if uh, we lose this week, we'll actually be tied with him for this week uh, I mean as far as our records go so definitely gonna make sure that I put in the best work I can so definitely leave a like down below guys and uh, as a little bit of a side note we have 100% clinch the playoffs and that is mind-boggling I can't believe I'm saying that so early in the season it's week 9 we have what three four weeks left before uh, playoffs actually start so the fact that we've already clinched playoffs just goes to show you how much effort and time I do put into these battles which and you know just goes to show you know just I want I want this victory I want this season so bad but on top of that um, last week uh, Blazing Squid and speaking of Blazing Squid if you guys are wanting some LDL style shirts like my Toronto Tota Dials shirt or some Salt Lake City Swampert swag Definitely go ahead and check out our merch store, which will be in the description down below. Lots of fun stuff there, but Blazing Squid and our and Prez Steven, Russell, coach of the Russellville Rockets, both faced off against each other uh, last week, and Prez actually ended up losing once again. So because of that, all of Blue Division, which is the division that all three of us are ironically in, um, all of our records are sitting at 6-2. and two. And at this point, all three of us have clinched playoffs. But now that uh, Press has had a couple of these unfortunate losses and setbacks, we are actually now in the second place of our division. The second place of our division. And uh, from what I've understood is Blazing Squid, spoiler alert, if you guys haven't checked out Blazing Squid's video for this week, go check it out. Um, go check it out. But Squid unfortunately did lose his week nine battle so if we can win if we can win this week you guys we will be in the top seed of our division and in the top spot for playoffs which will allow us a bye week at the beginning of playoffs so just a little bit of update for you i know it's a long intro but we're gonna just jump right into it go over carlos's team uh some of his threats things i think he'll be bringing then we'll jump into our team so first off he has that tyranitar very, very bulky Mon can set up the sand, of course, uh, given all rock types that special defense boost. Um, I'm almost expecting a special set to come this week, just because uh, a special set kind of does handle a little bit of the things that we do have, but I'm almost actually thinking maybe like a Dragon Dance weakness policy set might be a potential, which could be a little bit threatening. However, uh, Stealth Rocks, Fire Blast, Earthquake, you know, Crunch, Pursuit is actually something I'm a little bit worried about. However, I feel like we have the necessary conditions to easily take it down with stuff like our uh, Infernape and stuff. With like with like one close combat, even a max defense set won't be able to live one. So we do have an answer for the Tyranitar. Up next is going to be that, ma that uh, Alakazam and... Alakazam is just a huge, huge threat. Um, just, just a huge, huge speed. I think at base 120, yeah, 120 speed, and over, and overall, just very hard hitting Mon with access to things like Psychic, Psy Shock, Energy Ball, Hidden Powers, of course, Focus Blast, Dazzling Gleam, even. So uh, this thing could be very, very powerful, especially if you want to throw on a Life Orb, or it could potentially even be Sashed. Uh, if this thing gets up a sub, we will be in trouble. Uh, with call mines and stuff like that. However, I do feel like when it comes to certain mo I mean, with uh, with our team, I will be able to actually pursue trap him, which you guys will see here in a minute, uh, and easily take care of him because he, even though he can hit uh, very very strong, Alakazam can. It's very very frail. So hopefully we will be able to play that to our advantage. Up next is uh, Vaporeon. Vaporeon is actually a very bulky, bulky mon. Uh, can be run physically or especially uh, bulky. A lot of variants do tend to run, you know, the Bold Max uh, physically defensive set. Uh, 
which is kind of what I'm expecting. Scald, Ice Beam, Wish Protect, or maybe Baton Pass somewhere along that, uh, along those lines. If he does decide to not bring Ice Beam, we'll be in a much better uh, situation uh, than if he doesn't. I mean, than if he does. That's because Ice Beam really does threaten out a lot of our big hitters. Well, Scald can burn a lot of things as well. Um, you know, not, not having Ice Beam is uh, it makes it makes everything feel better. Uh, next up is going to be Metagross. Metagross is actually really scary this week, uh, just because it can be a very extremely hard-hitting one on the physical side with things like Hammer Arm, Earthquake, Meteor Mash, uh, Bullet Punch, Zen Headbutt, you know, things like that. And as well as he, if he wants to, an Assault Fest set actually really does put in a lot of uh, a lot of work if he do does want to bring it. Psychic and Steel is just a very, very powerful, powerful type combination. Um, it just... Uh, the only issues that, you know, it, that come with bringing it, especially if it is going to be banded, is if it's locked in, we can easily switch into our Mega Aggron to really handle it. And even uh, non-defensive uh, Mega Aggron can easily eat up the hits this thing wants to throw at us. So, all in all, I'm not too worried. Up next is a uh, Pokemon that actually is uh, really, really scary this week that could possibly sweep us. It's going to be uh, Cofagrigus. Cofagrigus, of course, can set up the Toxic Spikes, can uh, Will-O-Wisp things, it can set up Nasty Plots, it can set up the Trick Room, uh, and like I said, just honestly sweep our team. This thing is super scary, it can be super bulky, having access to the Mummy ability, taking away all of our other abilities, uh, like... Like say for instance, Mega Agron's filter takes away all super. It takes away that filter ability and gives us Mummy, which definitely is not good for Mega Agron. Moving on, we have Turtonator. Uh, he hasn't bought, brought Turtonator this season at all, even uh, since uh, taking over this team. So I really don't expect him bringing it. If he does decide to bring it, I honestly d expect it to be like some sort of like a salt vest, uh, really bulky attacking set with like Fire Blast and like Dr uh, Draco Meteor or something like that. Just something to hit very, very hard, even though it's extremely slow. Being Fire Dragon type, you know, I have a lot of things I handle it. For, uh, and so if he does decide to bring it, I'd be shocked. Uh, but I don't. I just don't see him bringing it. Up next is Mega Beedrill. This is actually a really interesting mod to deal with uh, this week, you guys. Only because it outspeeds everything on our team, uh, barring any Scarfers, of course. Base 145 speed, if I'm not mistaken. And adaptability is a threatening, threatening thing. Just giving it that double boost uh, instead of that 1.5 stab to all of its moves. So being Poison Bug, you turn Poison Jab. You know, all that stuff is going to be hitting extremely, extremely hard. Being able to have a fast U-Turner such as Omega Beedrill can be really problematic for our team. However, just being super frail as it is and being able to get up rocks this week is going to be really beneficial for us because that actually will allow us to, uh, to solidify some of those kills that otherwise we wouldn't be able to. Um, and even if he did, wants to bring like a Drill Run or a Brick Break, uh, I'm, I say uh too much in these videos. I got to learn to stop. But being able to bring our Mega Agron, Brick Break, and even Drill Run, it can't do a lot to Mega Agron, which is surprising to honestly say, but in, in all, Mega B Drill is really, really threatening to a lot of our mods. It could probably one-shot us. Uh, we have to be careful of any Fell Stinger uh, shenanigans that might take place, just because Fell Stinger, of course, giving it that plus three, if I'm not mistaken, after it knocks out a mod, so we just gotta be careful. We just gotta be careful. Uh, very bulky mod here is going to be Zapdos. Zapdos, of course, now getting a huge buff this generation. Now able to carry Defog and Static together. Previously, it couldn't do so, but now thanks to Ultra Sun and Moon, with move tu tutors and everything like that, it can carry both Static and Defog. So, very, very bulky uh, electric flying type. Of course, de it can Defog, like I said, Roost, Hidden Power... Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Heat Wave, so very, very scary Mon. If I am wanting to take this down, I just need to hit it as hard as I can, or even Toxic it, uh, which you will, which you guys will see. Toxic will play a huge role this week, especially for a lot of the potential walls or Pokemon that uh, I think Carlos could be bringing. Up next is going to be Diggersby. Diggersby actually is super, super scary this week, you guys, because uh, Diggersby can and might sweep our team. I'm not going to lie. The team I have set up isn't specifically built to take on 
Diggersby. However, when it comes to Diggersby, I feel like I can have the Mons necessary to at least eat up one hit. But if he decides to run like a Double Dance, Agility, Sword Dance, I think Diggersby gets Sword Dance. I know it gets Agility at the very least. Let me double check this really quick. Hold on. Uh, Diggersby, so I don't look like an idiot. Shut up, music. <laughs> it just says I'm an idiot. Yeah, uh, Diggers B, do, do you get Swords Dance? I know you get Agility. And it does get Sword Dance. So, yeah. If he decides to want to bring a Double Dance at Agility Swords Dance, you know, we're pretty much screwed. <laughs> uh, however, he does need to get up that Agility to guarantee we, it does outspeed everything on our team. And even then, I do have at least a couple answers to it if that is the case. Up next, we have Beware. Beware is very, very interesting. It did get access uh, to a couple interesting moves uh, in Ultra Sun and Moon. One of them, I believe, being Swords Dance as well. And if it does carry that fluffy ability, yes, it will be able to eat up a lot of hits. However, our Infernape handles, uh, in ha handles be Beware very, very well. But things like Hammer, Arm, Double Edge are very, very frightening, especially if he wants to ban this thing. Uh, just like, I mean, it's just a new mod, and so I've never really had to deal with it before, so if he does bring it, we will have to be careful in our calculations and trying to figure out what kind of set this is. However, if he does bring it, I'm more than, more than likely we'll be able to handle it. And last but not least, he does have Tangela. Tangela is a huge, huge wall this week for us. Being able to hold that, e that Eviolite allows it, of course, to uh, get that 1.5 defense, special defense boost, because it is an, it's an unevolved Pokemon. <laughs> I can't talk, but unlike its counterpart of Tangrowth, and usually being run Assault Vested, Tangela can actually, Tangela can actually 100% uh, continue to use moves like Sleep Powder, like Leech Life, and that's what allows Tangela to almost have an advantage over Tangrowth. Usually people want to run Tangrowth with those moves, however, just being on that special side, it doesn't have the bulk necessary, however, Tangela does with the Eviolite, so if Tangela does decide to come, we need to knock off that Eviolite as quick as we can, as well as Toxic it as quick as we can, because the quicker we can do those two things, the quicker that thing goes down and I'll feel happy. And, of course, he does have the Ghostium Z. Ghostium Z uh, can go on a couple of mons here, of course, the Alakazam, the Copagrigus, are the two main mons that I honestly do see this coming on, so if that Kofagurgus does want any setup, you know, there it definitely is that. There's also the Shadow Ball on Alakazam, which could hit extremely hard, especially after a Calm Mind. However, I just don't see him possible. I don't see him bringing it. There's no other moves I can think of personally that would be beneficial to the Ghostium Z, but there's definitely a lot of Normalium Z that could be potential. There's the, of course, there's <clears throat> Excuse me, I got something in my throat. There's the Beware, there's the Diggers B. You know, both of those can definitely be bringing something uh, to hit us as hard as it can because it's actually stab damage on top of everything. Uh, so, like a stab, like a like a stab, Normalium Z return or double edge. You know, it, it's just you never know what could po possibly happen. But let's go ahead and jump into our team now, you guys. Um, actually, you know what? Before I do that, I'll, I'll quickly think, go over what I think he might bring. Uh, first off, uh, I just want you guys to know right now, there's, he could bring, because he can bring anything, I'm not 100% sure, so I prepared for everything as best as I can, but Tyranitar, I see coming, Alakazam, Vaporeon, uh, Kofagrigus, Zapdos, and Mega Beedrill. Like, those, those things, like, really seem to threaten everything out the most, and can really bulk up a lot of hits, especially with that Zapdos, uh, that Zapdos-Vaporeon combo. So, I mean, you never know, Like, but like I said, you know, a bunch of different things can come. Tangela can come, Metagross can come at, as bulky, uh, as bulkier Mons, Tyran Tyranitar can be swapped out for Diggersby or Beware, so we, you just gotta play it by ear. Um, hopefully I called that team correctly, you know, Tyranitar, Alakazam, Kafagrigus, Beedrill, no, 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 Tyranitar, Alakazam, Vaporeon, uh, Kafagrigus, Zapdos, Mega Beedrill, you know, it's just it's up in the air. It's honestly up in the air. But woo, before I knock things off my shelf, let's go ahead and get on with our team. First mon that we have is going to be our liability, our crocodile. Let me go ahead and swap that over. 
Liability are Crocodiles coming this week, you guys. Uh, rocking its more Intimidate bulky set that we have brought before, just it's really, really comfortable to bring it. Uh, and we are running an Adamant Nature this week just because a lot of his mons I'm realizing, besides I want to say the Diggersby, the Diggersby and anything over base 100, which is going to be the Zapdos, the Beedrill, the Alakazam, and I believe the Metagross. Uh, but liability can outspeed a lot of these mods, and a lot of these mods are wanting to be maybe 252 HP, two, uh, 252 attack, special attack, or have some or are some kind of bulk invested mods. So I felt that it was safe to run this adamant nature for this extra damage. But we got earthquake, of course, to uh, hit things like the Tyranitar, the uh, what's it called, the Metagross, the Beedrill, the Turtonator. Uh, the knockoff, of course, uh, especially for the Alakazam, the Kofagrigus, the Tangela to get rid of that Eviolite. Pursuit is specifically there for uh, the Alakazam and the Metagross. Being psychic types, of course, wanting to swap out. It's going to be very, very awesome to try and catch him on those swap on those switches. And if we can, li and the extra HP is going to allow us to potentially live, you know, dazzling gleams. Or if you want to go for that focus blast, it's going to be scary. But we will be able to get up, get the knockout. Um, I'm expecting Carlos to play fairly safe and make the right switch outs. And so I'm banking on that being the right time to go for pursuit. I've never run a pursuit mon like this before in my history of doing draft battles like this. So it's something new, something very different. And then Stone Edge, of course, for us to hit that Zapdos as hard as we can. I'm praying that we can land the Stone Edges. I went for power over accuracy. And so hopefully this will be beneficial to us. Up next, you guys, we do have our uh, Jolteon, Jack or Jolteon, making its way here. And I forgot I am going to switch this up. It is not going to be Choice Specs. It's going to be Life Orb. Life Orb Jolteon this week. Uh, just for that extra power and, um, and allowing us to swap around moves. He doesn't have... Uh, I mean, while Diggersby is his dedicated ground type, there is a potential fear of him not wanting to switch that in. Uh, for fear of hidden power ice and all that stuff however Jolteon just puts in the work I mean Thunderbolt I mean signal beam two shots the Tyranitar almost gets the knockout on Alakazam two shots the Vaporeon uh, if it's Assault Vest or not Metagross doesn't want to take two signal beams or even two Thunderbolts Shadow Ball will be able to hit the Copagrigus really hard the Beedrill I think we almost one shot we can two shot the Zapdos the Diggersby is the only thing that really does stand in our way, which is really weird, but once again, I feel like he will be fearing that uh, the Hidden Power Ice, so we'll have to play around that, and uh, Tangela can eat up the hits a little bit, however, with Signal Beam, I think we almost two-shot it? I'll have to double-check my, my calcs on that, but um, this week, you guys, as we get into our team more and more, I will say I've kind of gone back to my roots of how I was at how I am as a battler I've been playing with a very slow pace different kind of thought process with my team building and it's worked for me I mean it's gotten me to six and two so far uh, for our record but I figured that this week that I needed to get back to how I usually play my com my comfort zone and go really hyper offensive which you guys will see I have a very hyper offensive team where I can just come in click a move, something gets two shot, I can live another hit, and I can kill something that always comes in that wants to swap out, and I think that's that's just going to throw Carlos a run for his money, and if something gets knocked out, I can easily bring in a, a wrench killer and just start doing the same thing once again. So, there's Jolteon, very, very interesting not to be running Hidden Power Ice, especially for that Diggersby. Like I said, Diggersby is a very huge problem this week, however, we do have things that can really handle it. Uh, but up next, it's going to be Blazing Squid, our Infernape. That's right. He, if his name's officially changed, baby. Blazing Squid wasn't able to uh, put in the work last week just because he wasn't able to hit the field. However, Blazing Squid is back holding the Electrium Z Iron Fist, baby. We're bringing a Swords Dance set uh, in order to really make sure that we handle everything and anything on this team. Flare Blitz, Close Combat, Thunder Punch is literally all we need for this team. And I'll tell you why. Close combat, Tyranitar doesn't want to take it. 
uh, after a Swords Dance, or even with without a Swords Dance, Flare Blitz handles the uh, the Alakazam. After a plus two, the Electrium Z uh, Gigavolt Havoc kills the Vaporeon. Metagross doesn't want to take a Flare Blitz. Cover Grigus doesn't want to take a Flare Blitz. Beedrill doesn't want to take a Flare Blitz, or even a Thunder Punch. A Thunder Punch near one shots the Zapdos after a plus two. We can close combat the Dickersby. We can close combat the Beware. We can fight Flare Blitz the Tangela. I kid you not, we can honestly destroy Carlos with Blazing Squid. My thought process is uh, have it come in on something it can easily take uh, take care of, such as potentially the Tangela, or for sure the Tangela, uh, the Tyranitar fearing the close combat, or even the Metagross. The Metagross is a little bit more scarier uh, than than the other two, but if I'm able to set up a Swords Dance against the Tyranitar or the Tangela, we are going to be putting in the work, baby. You better believe that. So I have to keep Blazing Squid as healthy as I can to guarantee. Um, I wanted to put Mock Punch on this for that Diggersby if it did get up the agility. However, I'm really I'm wanting to play that risky. I'm, I know I can eat the hits. On well, I can't eat the hits. I'm hyper offensive. Uh, I just I want to play, I want to play risky I know I can make the right calls to make this work and hopefully blazing squid blazing squid baby hopefully you can put in the work for us uh, up next you guys is going to be our mega agron palladium is back once again and he is really the only one that's built bulky because <laughs> he's always so bulky uh, this week he's a fully special defensive set just to kind of help us out a little bit more with those special mons such as the alakazam the Turtonator, the Kafagrigus, the Zapdos. Those things really, like, I am more scared of his special threats than his physical threats, even though I've been spending most of my time talking about Diggersby. Uh, which he may not even bring. I didn't even say Diggersby was his one, like, the big thing he was going to be bringing. Uh, but I, when it came to Mega Alakazam and stuff like Focus Blast, I wanted, I wanted that extra bulk there, uh, just to guarantee a lot of different things could be handled or could be walled. And so we have Heavy Slam and Earthquake, General Coverage. This is actually a very, very standard Mega Aggron set. Fully specially defensive. We got the, I believe it's uh, Careful Nature. Yep, Careful Nature. Uh, Heavy Slam, Earthquake for General Coverage. It hits everything on his team, almost everything, except his walls. We have Stealth Rocks, because rocks are important for us. And then the Toxic. If I can start Toxicing a lot of things on this team, such as the Kappa Grigus, the Tangela, the uh, Zapdos, the Vaporeon... You know, we will be in work. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think I've missed... I think I've only missed one tox... Ooh! Ooh. Sorry. I've only missed one... I've only have missed one toxic this season. So, I mean, hopefully I didn't just jinx myself there with the battle coming up. So, I'm happy for this. I'm happy. It's a, it's a very, very powerful mod. The standard set is standard for a reason. It works for a reason. And so I'm happy just to bring Mega Agron every single week because he always has a role and you bet your butt Mega Agron's going to be putting in the work. Uh, but coming up next for us is going to be our Kelly making its return once again after putting in an incredible, an incredible, uh, incredible battle. Uh, but once again, he's going to be Choice Scarf, but Choice Scarf Moxie this week. Like I said, the gates are open and Hyper Offense is here, baby. I got Outrage for General Stab at two shots near almost everything on his team. He doesn't have a Fairy type, which is really beneficial to us. The only thing that really wants to eat the hits are going to be maybe possibly a fully defensive Vaporeon and that, uh, what's it called? Metagross. Uh, we got the Crunch for the, uh, Alakazam. We got the Fire Fang for stuff like the Tangela, as well as the Metagross and the uh, Mega Beedrill, and the Brick Break, of course, for that Tyranitar. We almost get the Knockout, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we are in Adamant Nature here as well, because once again, um, even though Zapdos does max out at base 100 speed, uh, I have a feeling that just in, just in there's just something in the back of my head that's saying... You know, Zapdos is going to be bulky. Zapdos is bulky. That's how it usually is. If he brings fully offensive Zapdos, I will be shocked, yes. Um, but Zapdos is meant to be bulky. So even though he does have that base 100 speed, if he doesn't bring it max like that, you can run adamant. So we are running an a fully adamant 
uh, physically attacking 252 attack 252 uh, speed uh, Salamence just to give it, us that extra power and if I'm tell you what you guys if we can get one moxie up I think we can uh, after that Metagross is gone if we get even one moxie up I think we can honestly sweep both Infernape and Salamence are such powerful hitting mons that after one moxie Salamence R. Kelly can honestly, I think, just clean up for us. So, very, very scary uh, to think that. I don't want to, you know, jump to conclusions or anything, but Salamence put in the work uh, when I honestly thought it couldn't. It was, it's a tier one mon this season for a reason. And I picked it up wanting to use it, and I haven't used it as much as I have. So, hopefully, you know, this is the week where, you know, Scarf Moxie might come in and do the dang thing but you know who else could possibly do the dang thing is our final mon and that is going to be contra base our x cloud coming back once again baby with the choice specs set that's right i got a choice scarfer and i just got i have a choice specs user um once again scrappy because i want to hit kafa grigas but choice specs uh max hp max special attack because once again those bulkier mons uh those bulkier mons won't be able to outspeed speed us but i am running a timid nature instead of modest timid just allows me to outspeed uh, a couple of his mons that are close in speed tiers with us just in case so max hp uh, max special attack timid nature still does the darn work let me tell you what uh, Tyranitar might be able to eat up a Boom Burst, but it's not eating a Choice Specs Focus Blast. Let me tell you that much. And if you guys have been watching Salt Lake City Swampert for a couple seasons, you know I don't miss my Focus Blast. I do not miss my Focus Blast. Joey Galaxy came through for us, and now Contra Vase is going to come through and uh, Focus Blast everything to hell and back. If I'm honestly thinking that if he does not leave the Tyranitar to get up rocks, uh, or if he doesn't bring the Tyranitar at all, I honestly want to lead Contra Base and just click Boom Burst out the gates. I honestly do, just because we can hit everything so stupid hard, like so stupid hard it's not even funny, um, and honestly just put on that pressure from turn 1. If he does bring the Tyranitar, I might debate going to Mega Aggron um, to get up rocks as well and then pl play it by ear then, uh, but like I said, it's up in the air how, how his team turns out. But I have Fire Blast, of course, for the Metagross, just in case it is a um, an Assault Fest. We can still two-shot it with Specs, if I'm not believed, I believe. And then Surf, of course, is just there, just in case for anything else. It was just another coverage move. It helps, but the it's a safe move for T-Tar. It's a safe move for uh, the Digger's B, for the Turtonator. Vaporeon, not so much, so we do have to be careful about that. But for the most part, Boom Burst, Specs, Timid, just two-shots all of his Mons. And that's awesome. Like I said, this is this is my regular playstyle, just gung-ho, choice specs, choice scarf, or just like setup mons, hyper-offensive, out the wazoo. This is how I started to learn how to play. This is the people I started watching on YouTube uh, were playing. However, the teams that I've had in the past were extremely fast, and this season, you know, my team's been a lot slower, so I haven't been able to do that as much. I've been able to learn new playstyles and new uh, thought process processes wh whatever the word is but I'm back to my roots and I can't wait for this battle I can't wait for this battle because so much is on the line here you guys um, there is like I said if we can win this battle we'll be in the top seed of the entire league the entire league and that's something I want and I'm not gonna disappoint you guys the Salt Lake City Swampers are going to take that top seed spot and we are going to get that bye week for the playoffs but that's gonna wrap up this video this week you guys let me know what you think about my team down below uh what mods you think i could have brought uh let me just kind of go over the list of and things i could have brought and the reason why i didn't just to kind of give you an explanation um <clears throat> miss magius could have come honestly it really did help out with a lot of things even i even wanted to like debated like nasty plot over infernape for swords dance However, just a lot of things really stood in its way, especially Tyranitar and the Mega Bee Drill. So I didn't want to bring that. Armaldo was almost in the place of Crocodile. However, the stabs for Crocodile benefited us a lot more. Uh, so Armaldo was, wasn't coming. Florgus was a possibility. I almost bought, brought Florgus to be offensive. However, there were just so many uh, different 
issues bringing it uh, offensive or even defensive, uh, like you know, Mega B Drill, the steel type with Metagross, and just a lot of things just weren't benefiting Florgus, and so Florgus was next. Uh, Rose Raid also could have come instead of Toxic Spikes. Like I said, Toxic Spikes were huge for us. However, with that Mega Beedrill there, uh, it does absorb Toxic Spikes, unfortunately, from my understanding. So I didn't want to bring that. And then Slowbro could have put in a lot of work but and could have held Palladium Toxic Stall a lot of things. However, with Zapdos there and with uh, Vaporeon there, I know it would have just been a Toxic Stall battle and stuff. And I didn't want to play that game. Uh, then... And yeah, so that that was that was that you guys we were actually bringing our Z Crystal. We're bringing a very hyper offensive team. So yeah, that's gonna be it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, definitely leave a like and subscribe down below. I try and put out content like this every single week. But I'm gonna get up out of here. My name is Sunbrother Two, and I'm out. <laughs>